While most people were having Thanksgiving dinner, all 26-year-old Bartley Dobbin wanted to do was save his children's souls. So instead of going to a family dinner with his wife and kids, he took a detour to his job at a foundry. There, he would put his sons in a furnace and incinerate them. Why would a loving father think burning his sons alive would save them? Bartley Dobin was born in Muskegon, Michigan on May 6, 1961 and grew up in a normal family. At the age of 16, he found religion and that was set the tone for the rest of his life. He was extremely devout in his Christian faith and he never swore, drank, or smoked cigarettes. He was well liked by those who knew him and was described as timid and shy. According to his mother, he was fanatical about his faith and would talk about Christianity to anyone that would listen. His faith remained strong as he graduated high school. Like most men in Muskegon, Bartley got a job at Cannon of Muskegon Foundry, which at the time was the largest employer in town. There, he started as a janitor and worked his way up to a foundry ladle operator. In 1983, he met his wife Susan at church and the pair married that same year. Married life was a good fit for Bartley, but at work it was a different story. Bartley was known to be a friendly and outgoing person, but he was bullied regularly by his co-workers. Bartley's control room partner Paul White said, He took a lot of abuse from people he worked with. I felt a lot of people would take advantage of his nature and inability to come back with a lot of vulgar talk. He'd get around it. He'd say, Don't be such a smart Alice. A mind unravels. The Dobbin family grew in 1984 when they welcomed their oldest son, Bartley Jr., into the world. However, signs of mental illness started to manifest almost a year later. Bartley started to believe that the registration numbers on trucks were telephone numbers and he would frequently stop at phone booths to call the numbers. He became incredibly jealous and believed that Susan was giving secret signals through her body language to other men. At some point, he became convinced that his wife was having an affair with a member of the rock band KISS. He believed that KISS, the rock band, parked their van in front of their house and were sending laser beams into his home and those beams would bounce off the walls and kill Bartley Jr. His delusion became so great that in order to protect his family, he covered the windows and family photos with baby diapers to prevent the laser beams from killing everyone inside. For an extra layer of protection, Bartley then anointed Bartley Jr. in olive oil and read scriptures nonstop. Susan was afraid, but she didn't know what was wrong with her husband. She thought maybe it was the bullying at his job that was getting to him. And so, she arranged for the two of them to go on vacation. In 1985, Susan and Bartley left their son in the care of Susan's sister and drove to their vacation spot. Almost as soon as they reached their destination, he told Susan that he heard the voice of God tell him that Bartley Jr. was in trouble and they had to go back to save him. That led to a terrifying 80 miles per hour drive through twisting roads. When they finally reached Bartley Jr., he was absolutely fine. After that terrifying incident, Bartley was committed for two months in a psychiatric hospital and was diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic and prescribed psychotropic drugs. He was also ordered by doctors to continue treatment at a community mental health center. The once energetic man was now quiet and subdued. His colleagues that discovered that he'd spend time in the hospital began harassing him more and someone even stuck a kick me I'm crazy sign on his back. We can only speculate that the bullying at work only made things worse for his mental health. And even with medication, he still believed that Susan was cheating on him. Like his mental health, his marriage to Susan started to crumble when his delusions focused on Susan's job at a food company. He believed that babies were being ground up at Susan's job and as a result became obsessed with the fate of missing children. At the same time, his religious beliefs became downright fanatical by 1986. Searching for Jesus in all the wrong places. While Bartley was looking for Jesus, he found Ruth Vaughn. Described by Bartley's family as a crazy preacher, Vaughn was a used car salesman and an unordained pastor who led Emmanuel Fellowship Church. It was a small church of about 35 members that had services inside Vaughn's basement. The two met in March 1987 when Bartley visited the church. Within two weeks of meeting, Bartley's life began to spiral. To Bartley's family, this wasn't a typical church. For one, Bartley revered Vaughn as godlike and took his word as gospel. 
So when Vaughn told Bartley to stop taking his medication and that Jesus would heal him, he believed him. Bartley visited Vaughn's home every day, which was only five blocks from his house. He also gave Vaughn 10% of every paycheck and would give Vaughn any spare money that he had. And he became obsessed with the literal interpretation of the Bible. Vaughn's brand of Christianity was patriarchal and he taught that women should be subservient to men. While Susan tried to be a submissive and obedient wife, this didn't stop Vaughn or Bartley from referring to her as a Jezebel and his parents as pagans and heathens. But things came to a head when Bartley demanded things like having Susan tie his shoes. Of course, this caused more friction in their struggling marriage as Bartley and Susan began fighting more about his membership in the fundamentalist sect. Their arguments were always about their faith, Bartley not taking his medication, and his growing obsession with Vaughn's fundamentalist teaching. Susan had enough. Before Easter, she filed for separation and in response, Bart filed for divorce. Because this was Susan's second marriage and Bartley's first, he was convinced that Susan didn't repent from her first divorce. His new zealous beliefs were infecting his entire family. On Easter Sunday, 1987, Bartley showed up to a family's Easter egg hunt and things got violent. Bartley now hated holidays he once celebrated growing up. He thought that celebrating them was akin to pagan rituals. As soon as he arrived, he began breaking up the Easter egg hunt. He was so violent that his family called the police and he had to be restrained and arrested. While Bartley was in jail, Susan signed an affidavit on June 2nd, which stated that Bartley had a habit of, quote, taking the children out at night to places unknown and not returning until early morning hours. When Bartley finally stood in front of a judge, he was ordered to start taking his medication again and the judge waived the 45-day sentence. Things calmed down after he was ordered back on medication. The Dobbins tried to reconcile and moved in together again in August. Despite things seemingly returning to normal, Bartley started walking all night in something that he called his faith walks and would often end up spending the night at Rude Vaughn's house. By October, Bartley stopped taking his medication again. Countdown to Tragedy Bartley's delusion sent him into another dark spiral. After his second son Peter was born, his fixation on missing children returned, but this time there was a darker component. He was now obsessed with the idea that missing children were being burned at his foundry and that there was a conspiracy to cover it up. As he sunk further into his mental illness, he committed bestiality with a stray dog, then killed that dog four days later because he was worried about puppies that would be abnormal three weeks before he killed his children. Bartley's focus then shifted to the apocalypse. He believed that the apocalypse was coming and he had to save the boys. A week and a half before Thanksgiving, Bartley Jr. asked his mother why did his father try to kill them in the bathtub. Susan confronted Bartley and he admitted that he baptized his sons because he had to save their souls. On November 21st, Bartley was on one of his faith walks and made his way to Rude Vaughn's home in the middle of the night. According to Vaughn, Bartley was wearing only a pair of slippers and his PJs. Bartley visited their home the next day and while we don't know what conversations they had, we do know that Bartley missed two days of work and only showed up on the 25th, the day before Thanksgiving. Despite Bartley's mental illness, it was uncharacteristic of him to miss a day of work. Around 1 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day, Bartley went to his co-worker Arthur Schott's home. The two were acquaintances at work that regularly spoke about scripture. It was becoming common for Bartley to be up at all hours at night due to stress. They spoke about the Bible until 4 a.m. Arthur said that Bartley was focused particularly on the verse about God's trial by fire. Trial by fire. We researched Bible verses that contained the phrase trial by fire that Bartley could have been referring to. And while there are many different Bible verses, the one we believe that Bartley was fixated on was 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13 that states, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. What that means is basically there will be a day when one's faith is tested, and that trial will reveal if your faith is superficial and will disappear as soon as something bad happens, or if your faith will remain the same because it has a strong foundation. 
it doesn't mean literal fire. Unfortunately, Bartley took this verse literally. To Bartley, Judgment Day was coming and his children were the children of Jezebel and God was going to kill them. And being a loving father, Bartley decided to spare his children's God's wrath. He believed that he should be the one to kill them so he can do it gently. On Thanksgiving Day 1987, Susan agreed for her and the kids to go with Bartley to his parents' house for Thanksgiving dinner. But before they left, Bartley told Susan he needed to stop by his job first to pick up his Bible and he wanted to give the kids a quick tour. At 3.42 p.m., Bartley chatted with a security guard and signed the guest book. He told his kids, come on, daddy's going to show you where he works. He walked the boys into the foundry and opened up the ladle. A transfer ladle is a large bucket that is used to heat up metal until it melts so that it can be poured into molds. But there weren't any molds. He put his boys inside and sang to them and played with them before closing the lid. We can only imagine how confused and frightened two-year-old Bartley Jr. and one-year-old Peter were. In Bartley's twisted mind, he was saving them. He ignited the burner and as the temperatures rose to 1300 degrees, Bartley walked away. He returned to the guard desk and told the guard that his children were in the furnace. The guard, clearly confused, asked if his children had fallen in. Bartley shook his head and quietly answered, No, I put them there. It was all done in 15 minutes. Bartley then asked the security guard to turn off the furnace, then went back to the car. When Susan didn't see her boys, she asked Bartley, Where were the children? He told her that he put them in the furnace. The boys were found burned beyond recognition. One small mercy, if you could call it that, is that the boys suffocated to death before they burned. The Arrest and Trial Bartley was arrested that day. He was charged with two counts of first-degree murder. Following his arrest, he was evaluated to see if he was competent to stand trial. He was deemed incompetent, then competent, at least four different times between December 16, 1987 and July 28, 1988, with finally being deemed competent as long as he remained on his medication. During the May 17, 1989 trial, prosecutors said that Bartley killed the children because of his failing marriage. Family and friends testified that Bartley was a loving father and that he was doing better after his first psychotic break until he met Rude Vaughn. Bartley's brother testified that Vaughn was the one that put the ideal of soul cleansing by fire in Bartley's head. The defense wanted Bartley found not guilty by reason of insanity. After nine days of deliberation, the jury found Bartley guilty of two charges of first degree murder with mental illness on May 23, 1989. He was sentenced to life in prison. The Aftermath After Bartley was sentenced to life in prison, Susan forgave her husband. She and Bartley's mother appeared on an episode of Oprah to present Bartley's side of the story and explain why she forgave him. Joining us now is his wife, Susan Dobbin, who says that she is forgiving her husband and wants him home with her to retrieve and repair what is left of her family. She says he is a paranoid schizophrenic who was not responsible for his actions. She also says that one of the hardest things right now is dealing with the criticism from the community for forgiving her husband and ending the divorce proceedings that he initiated in April of 1987. Your husband incinerated your babies. Yes, he did. And you have forgiven him. Yes, I have. And I know that's what we're taught in the Bible. I know it's... it's, it's it's how we help ourselves by, by, you know, forgiving other people. But I don't know how you were able to do that. Can you tell us how, how you've come to a point where you now say, all is forgiven? Because, well, if he had had criminal intent, if I had felt that he had, it may, even with my religious beliefs, have been hard to forgive him. But... I know him. He's a gentle, loving, caring man. He loved the kids. How long were you married to him? It's been six years now. Mm -hmm. Four years at the time. Four years at the time. Mm -hmm. Susan eventually divorced Bartley in 1992. 
Rude Vaughn was adamant that he had nothing to do with Bartley's fixation on God and the apocalypse. He said that despite what the family claimed, he told Bartley to take his medication and that he couldn't just divorce his wife because they were already married with children. Rude Vaughn's church would close the year of the trial. Bartley's attorney appealed the conviction in 1992, however the Michigan Supreme Court upheld the first degree murder convictions. As of the making of this video, Bartley Dobbins is still in prison. Thank you for watching The Twin Files. Tell us what you think about this tragedy, and do you think Rude Vaughn's influence had a role in Bartley's mental decline? And click this video if you want to see another Thanksgiving tragedy about a man who killed four of his family members.